Well, good morning and welcome to our morning service of Holy Communion. It's the Sunday before Lent. <laughs> so we're heading towards Easter already, folks. Um, but anyway, really good to see you all and it's nice to be with you uh, this Sunday. Uh, one bit of news, uh, uh, Caroline's just reminded me to say that Sophie, if you didn't know, had had her baby, Tilly. More details you can obtain from Caroline or Agnes or people who know these things about weight, names, and <laughs> but she, I think she's still in hospital, but, uh, but we don't know. don't know. Anyway, so our thoughts and prayers are obviously with Sophie and Pete and the family, but that's a good bit of news. Um, Jeff, I think you wanted to share something quickly or now or yeah, yeah. yeah it's a uh, hospitality month uh, I don't know how uh, we've been enc- challenging encouraging people over this month to have a cup of tea have a, have a meal just spend a bit of time with perhaps people they don't normally spend time with just to get them to know us as a group get to know other people uh, and to that end just to flag up it's in the notice sheet but on the uh, I put down there uh, on the 21st uh, of the that's Wednesday the 21st of February I just thought it'd be quite fun to go to the pub so uh, I just say here to all gentlemen really I'm, I'm not excluding people if they're not but uh, I just thought it'd be fun uh, gentlemen in the pub King Charles which is just out those doors down the road half past seven and just a, a chance to have a, a bit of an evening no agenda just a, a just a hospitality um, get together in the local pub Wednesday the 21st but that's part of the wider hospitality uh, month and we're looking forward to seeing uh, you hearing your stories. Who have you spoken with? Who have you had a chance to get to know? Who have you had a cup of tea with um, over when we come to our next All Age service um, next month? But Hospitality Month, spend time with people. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, also, just as a sort of a, I suppose, a contrast, that of course, a reminder that it being the Sunday before Lent means that Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. So there is a service here on Wednesday evening uh, for Ash Wednesday. Some bands of marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between Joshua Edward Harty of this parish uh, and Hannah Marie Janet Barrett of this parish and also Christchurch Creekmore. This is for the first time of asking, and if any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Father, we pray for them and for all who will be preparing for marriage this year, that you will bless them in their preparations and in their life together, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we come to worship, you'll take the order of service sheet. We continue our series and thinking today about the body of Christ, the church, the gifts that God gives us. So some verses from Psalm 50. The Lord, the most mighty God, has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. Gather to me, my faithful who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. So Father, as we come into your presence this morning, we come to hear you because you have spoken. We come to give you our praise, to share our prayers, to hear your word. Lord, Bless us, we pray, that we may have open hearts and open ears. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we stand together? And we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
please sit. And so as we think of the church, the body of Christ, we come to confession, not just of our own sins, but also the failings of the church and the times that it fails to recognize the lordship of Christ and and have, has veered from what God calls us to be. And we're going to use the confession of based on the words of Daniel, the prayer of Daniel in Daniel 9. And he said, I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Lord God, you brought your people out of slavery with a mighty hand and made for yourself a name which endures to this day. And these words that we now say together are based on the prayer. Let's say together. We have sinned, O Lord, and done wrong. Lord, hear us and forgive us. In keeping with your compassion and righteousness, deliver us from judgment, we pray. Lord, hear us and forgive us. The sins of your people have caused many to despise the church. Lord, hear us and forgive us. We do not come before you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Lord, hear us and forgive us. Let's just pause for a moment. And we continue together. O Lord our God, do not delay, because your people bear your name. Send your Holy Spirit to revive your church and renew our trust in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. The collect for today. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Tony. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, good. Um, so this morning we are thinking about uh, spiritual gifts and the gifts that God has given us to uh, do his work as his followers. So we're going to sing two songs uh, now. We're going to sing, first one is Strength Will Rise, uh, based on a wonderful verse from Isaiah. And then we're going to sing Spirit of the Living God, inviting God's Spirit to inspire us and to enable and encourage us to do his work. So I'd invite you to stand if you're able as we sing these two songs together.
encourages us. Thank you that you are a God who has sent your spirit, who's given us our gifts to use to your glory. And I just pray now that we would feel your spirit with us and that your spirit would encourage us and enable us to do your work until you come again in glory. sit and pray that God's Spirit will speak to us through his word. Have our first reading, please. The reading is from... 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 to 11. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to dumb idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. 
All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we stand? Our Gospel reading is taken from Mark, chapter 9, beginning at the second verse. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do uh, be seated. Have you ever been in a situation where you needed something doing and you needed a particular tool to help you do it and achieve it? I, uh, maybe it's just me, but you know, I've got a friend of mine, Jason, and Jason and I often swap tools. I, I often borrow his nail gun, his 3D printer. Currently, I have his nine inch angle grinder because my six inch angle grinder is just too small to sort out my patio. He tends to borrow my impact driver and, uh, and occasionally my plastering skills, which are questionable. But anyway, he borrows those. I, and I lend other things to people. 20 years ago, I, I lent a strimmer to a friend. I haven't seen that since. Uh, I, lent, I lent a stepladder to somebody a month or so ago. I'm hoping that I'll get that back. But the point is that sometimes we do lend things to people temporarily so that they can achieve a job, so that they can do something with it. And what we're going to be exploring today is the idea of spiritual gifts. We've been looking over the last few weeks, we're looking at our series on discipleship. What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? And as part of that, we want to explore the idea of spiritual gifts. So I want you to hold on to the idea of a borrowed angle grinder, because actually, I think that fits the model of what a spiritual gift is quite well. So we're going to explore that. What does a gift, what does it even mean? When we talk about the word gift and a spiritual gift, have you thought, what is that? Well, if we look at the Greek, it gets interesting. The Greek for gift, the word that we translate, is charismata, where we get the word charismatic, or charisma. The two are very linked. And in modern Greek, the word charismata is the word that is used, apparently, I don't speak Greek, so if you do, please forgive me, and if I'm wrong, it's the word that is used for birthday present. So when this word charismata comes there, it's, it's a present, it's something which is given. But there is a problem here, because that's not what it meant 2,000 years ago. Because when you give a birthday present, you give something for someone, for their benefit, for them to enjoy, for them to use, and that might be part of it. But when we're looking at spiritual gifts, that's not quite the same. Because charismata comes from the Greek word carries. And carries is the word that we translate as the grace of God. 
grace, something that's given without merit, without earning it. And so when we look at spiritual gifts, we need to hold on to that. Spiritual gifts from the Holy Spirit are given without earning, without striving. And so there must be more than this. So if gift means something from the grace of God, why does Paul, we read about it in 1 Corinthians 12, why does Paul write about spiritual gifts so much? Because he doesn't just do it in 1 Corinthians 12, he also does it in Romans 12 and Peter and, and Titus. There's several books where there is this big focus on spiritual gifts. And why was this such a, a focus? It's an interesting thought. And it's this. If you look at the churches of Corinth and Romans, they were polytheocracies. There were lots and lots of different religious groups that people could choose of, of which at the time Christianity was just one. And so Paul is writing to people at the time who have got experience of other different uh, sort of religious practices, as it were. And when they went to these other places, they went there expecting some personal manifestation, some personal experience. They were there for what they could get out of it. And that we know those practices at the time, they might have involved doing something to get yourself into some sort of trance-like state or taking some sort of um, substances like mushrooms or whatever it might well be to raise you to a place where you thought you had a spiritual experience. And so these things were going on, and so to the, the, the early Christians, these young Christians in the Corinth church, Paul is writing, and they're saying, we know, we know what it is to have the Spirit. What is this? We know what it's like. We've been there, we've been to these places, we've had these spiritual experiences after drinking ourselves to a funny place. And so Paul is writing this, this 1 Corinthians, to a group of people who think they know what it's like. And you can almost read a bit of sarcasm in what he says. You say, when he says, I, I don't want you to be uninformed. And he's only saying that, it's because it's these people would have thought, we know about it. And Paul is saying, no, you know that when you were pagans, Somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Let me tell you what spiritual gifts really are about. First of all, it's not about, about personal pleasure. It's not about doing things for ourselves. That is why birthday present doesn't translate well. He says this, it's about giving glory to God. If you look at verse 3, he says... You only say the words, Jesus is Lord, through the Spirit. Jesus is Lord. Spiritual gifts always give the glory to God. And secondly, it's not about something that you get. It's about something for the uh, common good. A spiritual gift is for the common good. It even says in verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Spiritual gifts are not showy. They're for everyone. And lastly, spiritual gifts are given not for personal effort, not something we earn. Verse 11, he distributes them to teach to each one just as he determines. So spiritual gifts would give glory to God. They're for the common good. And they're not something we earn. Are there different types of gifts? I would say yes. Now, Paul doesn't mention these specifically. Paul just mentions lots and lots of different types of gifts that he has witnessed when he wrote these words, say, nearly 2,000 years ago. And, but I think if we look at them, there are three sort of, we could group the gifts into three. And I think being aware of perhaps some of the differences helps understand and distinguish and perhaps make us think, what spiritual gifts can we see in those around us? What do we have inside us? And sometimes it's a bit awkward and a bit uncomfortable thinking about ourselves in ways that we think we might be gifted or not gifted. But actually, you cannot, cannot escape from being gifted by God. When we read our New Testament reading, it talks about the transfiguration of Christ. You cannot come to the presence of God the Father and not be changed. So whether you like it or not, the spiritual gifts, the gifts of the Spirit, by the grace of God, are in all of us. 
I reckon there are three groups. Some which just occur naturally, some which are grown, and some which are the angle grinders, there for a temporary purpose. Let's go through all of them, if you will. It's, Paul's not got an exhaustive list here. These are just the ones he gives, I think, as an example. Let's go for the ones which I would say are the gifts that are hardwired to your personality if we're grouping them together. And I, I'm going to borrow from Romans 12 here, not 1 Corinthians, where Paul is also talking about these gifts. He lists them here. Encouragement. He says in Romans 12, if your gift is to serve, then serve. Anyone recognize they've got a gift of serving? If your gift is to encourage, then give encouragement. If your gift is to give, then give generously. These are all considered spiritual gifts. Have you ever thought of those as being spiritual gifts? Gifts from God. Is that something that you recognize in yourself and the people around you? I would say, coming here and we're living and working at St. James over the last seven months, there is a real spirit of encouragement here. So many people say such encouraging things, and, and that is a real gift. There are one or two people who have it even more so. I'll give you an example. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, it was the first time one of my children came to the front of church in one of our previous churches and helped me do the intercessions. We asked him, and he said, yes, he'd like to, so I did a bit, and he did a bit, and it was great. But two days later, in the post, came a card for him from one of the congregation just to say thank you. Thank you because your prayers were an encouragement to me. But I tell you what, that card was a huge encouragement to him. The gift of encouragement. Gifts which are hardwired into your personality. Things which bring joy, which are encouraging, which help people. Serving, mercy, giving. How can we use them to give the glory to God? And how can we use them for the common good? Second group of gifts. Uh, this is perhaps where we might even start using the word gift. These are the things where we are given a little bit, but we've got to work on it to grow it. Things like music. D here we go. Do you know where is the first, the first example of a spiritual gift in the Bible? The first mention of someone who's got a spiritual gift in the Bible. Ah, oh, we've, we've got James there wiggling his fingers. You're wrong. It's not. It's got to go back to Exodus, right to the start of the book of Exodus, right to the start. And it talks this. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to bring, design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze. Yes! The first account of the Spirit of God, a gift of the Spirit, was in arts and crafts for the Ark of the Covenant. That's why Paul's lists are not exhaustive, because there are more examples of them. But there is a good example of a gift which is grown. I imagine that Bezalel didn't suddenly wake up one morning, drank his coffee or whatever they drank 4,000 years ago, and thought, Ah, I now know how to work in sheet metal gold. I imagine it's something he had to practice, like music. And Paul mentions some of these as spiritual gifts. He doesn't talk about music and arts, but I absolutely think those are part of it. Things like teaching and leadership. They're not the sorts of things that people are necessarily born with, but if there's a desire there, and with practice and work, they are things that grow. What spiritual gifts have you got? What are your interests? What are your passions? What has God placed in you to grow, to be good at? And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I don't think there's anything, you're wrong. Even beyond the church, people say there are things that you are better at. You are, you are, every single person has 300 things they are good at. And there is one thing that you are better at than 10,000 other people. What are the gifts that God has given you? And how can you use them to give God the glory and for the common good? Back in uh, COVID, I'll give you an other example uh, of perhaps of leadership. I read it on BBC News, an example of the gaming vicar. 
He, called, I, he gave himself a funny title. I forget what that was. But during COVID, he, he, he played like playing computer games. I don't know if there's anyone here who plays computer games and, and things like that. But this was a vicar. He enjoyed playing computer games. And during that COVID time, he set up online church. He just sort, sort of created a gaming church type community. And people would come along and they chat as they do. And they tell them their stories and confess their sins or whatever it is they wanted. But he used his ex- interest, his experience, his gift of gaming to bring glory to God and for the common good. What are your interests? What are your gifts? What have you grown? What have you practiced? How can you give them to glory to God and for the common good? And lastly, this is the borrowed angle grinder type of gift. Something which is given for a temporary time to serve a specific purpose, to do something. And, and Paul talks a lot of them in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 12. He mentions prophecy, wisdom, healing, faith, speaking in tongues, miraculous powers. Wouldn't it be great to see more of that? Well, I think actually, in my experience, I have seen some of these where the Spirit of God has given someone a specific um, skill, a specific gift for a particular time. A friend of mine, Alan, once uh, told me a story. He just finished his sign language course. He could speak sign language, but I don't myself. And he was at a meeting, and, and, and some parents brought their daughter to him. And, and they said, she's deaf, and she's dumb, she can't speak but we'd like you to pray for her and heal her. And Alan just sort of went, well, I don't feel I, could, well, I can't do this, but he, he went anyway and he, and he prayed. He, he signed to this girl, do you want to be able to speak? Do you want to hear? And she signed back and said yes. And he prayed and, and she could. And she could speak the gift of God of healing for a specific moment, for a specific time. What about faith? How can you have a spiritual gift of faith? Surely we all have faith? Well, I think there are times when suddenly there is a sense of you know and you have such strong faith. Um, A church warden who I used to know a few years ago served in the military and he was in the Falklands War. And and he said he he recalled the moment when it came over the, the, the radio, over the news of the sinking of the Belgrano and there was panic on his ship. And he said, I prayed because I didn't know what else to do. He said, but I've never had such a sense of it's going to be okay. He said, and that was just such a sense of peace and knowledge, it was okay. So he said, I told everyone, I know it's going to be okay. And they calmed. Faith. Faith in a certainty at a point. And what about prophecy? I, I, again, I, I can think of an example I've seen uh, uh, when I was back at university. Uh, in, in, I was in a, in, a, in a worship meeting with some other students, and I happened to know two people there who didn't know each other. And, and one of them stood up timidly, scared, nervously, and said, I think God's just said to me, there's someone here with an Uncle Frank. I think that was his name. You're worried because he's ill. God says he's going to be okay. Something very specific. And, and, and actually that message was for someone else who I knew and they said, oh, that's me. God speaking into people's lives. That's prophecy. So these spiritual gifts are the ones that we can use. But we are called, we are told by Paul a little bit later in 1 Corinthians 14 to, to ask for them, to seek these out, to be aware of the Spirit of God moving in us. But how do we use them to give God the glory and for the common good. Because sadly, these are open to abuse. There are people who would profess to have spiritual gifts. How do we know if the spiritual gift is from God? It's simple. Is it for the common good? And does it give God the glory? Or is it self-seeking and divisive? We can work that out for ourselves. So, It says here, really clearly, there are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. When it says everyone, that's you and me. And now to each one, everyone, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So which gifts do you have? Which ones are naturally occurring part of your personality? Which ones have you developed because of an interest placed in you by God? Which ones are you going to use 
for the common good. And there are times when we need supernatural help. Let's be brave and bold in asking for those. Let's ask for God's angle grinder because we want to use those to give the glory to God and to serve the common good. Let's pray. Uh, Almighty God, we know that you are working in us. Help us to be open. Help us to reflect on what you have gifted with us. Help us to see how we can use that for the common good. To give you glory. And to share your love with all those on planet Earth. Amen. We're going to affirm our faith now, and the words that we use will, are taken uh, from Colossians chapter 1, and the small words of Paul. Paul. Um, halfway down, there is a very small misprint. It should be thrones, powers, rulers, authorities. Let's stand together, and let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we say together, Christ is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. By him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones, powers, rulers, authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. In him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Amen. Let us pray. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of loneliness, kneel and adore him. The Lord is his name. The response is not, I'm afraid, the one on the service sheet. So when I say the words, let us worship the Lord, would you respond in the beauty of holiness. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us pray to the God of glory revealed to us in his Son. Father, lengthen and deepen our attention span as we, your people, listen to your beloved Son so that we do not fail to hear his will for us or share his longing for the world to be saved. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, with such humility you entered the world to save it from love's giving, to save it through love's giving. Increase our desire to enter into one another's suffering and hardship to share the world's resources fairly with one another and recognize all humanity as brothers and sisters. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, let us not take one another for granted, but wake each morning ready to notice the Christ in each person we see and speak to, and reverence your hidden presence in all creation. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, in our prayers we stand alongside all who are too weak to pray or too confused. 
May all who are suffering sense your love and comfort and be given strength to persevere and peace of mind and spirit. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, we commend to your eternal presence all those who have died recently, that they may rest in your peace and rise in your glory. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, thank you for providing always the encouragement and inspiration we need for the work you would have us to do. Give us the grace to trust your will for us and to walk forward boldly in your company. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Bryony. And uh, just to say that obviously you see in the notices we, well, our prayers specifically for the family of um, Val Tremor, whose funeral is later this week. And also... Um, I haven't any up-to-date news, but um, many of you will remember Brian, who, is, who sat just near the front. Um, uh, when I saw him on Friday, he's very much in the last days, he's in palliative care, so I'll pray for him, but I haven't heard anything updated on that. But he is in hospital, and sadly, this is not, he's not expected to come out, so uh, we'll keep him in our prayers. Let's stand together. From Ephesians chapter 2. We are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. So may the peace of God be always with you brief moment as we share the peace. And we're going to continue with the song Spirit of Holiness, Wisdom and Faithfulness.
And so we come to celebrate the greatest gift that God gave, which was of himself in his son, in his death for us. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. And now we give you thanks that your church is called to bear your name and witness to the good news of Jesus, revealing the love of the Father. Please join me in the next section. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we can join the Song of the Angels, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Do please sit. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. And together, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your spirit on us, that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For all honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So we draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And so as we come, either to receive or just to receive a blessing, then we say together, Gracious God, accept the offering of our worship the hearts of your people, joined in praise and thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Lord, help each of us to be set apart, set apart for you, to be our Lord and Master, our Saviour, ready to do your will. So the prayer after communion we say together, God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit. Let's stand to sing. we've sung we are not alone <laughs> and we are empowered by God's spirit to be his people to be his church so let's go from this place with that thought in our mind but perhaps before you go share the hospitality of a cup of coffee or tea or something so may the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always Amen, Amen. we go in the name of Christ Amen.